pleasant good morning and welcome to another HEDM morning devotion. My name is Sister Wendy and today I will be speaking on Judith. So let's take a look at what her name means. Judith means she will be praised or woman of Judea. It's a name that signifies courage and wealth. Judith was a virtuous and a pious woman, devoted service to God, a beautiful widow. Judith was a strong and courageous woman. She was chosen by God to save her people. So let's meet the biblical hero heroine who beheaded a Babylonian to save her people. Using her brains and looks, the widow Judith gained access to Nebuchadnezzar's army and slave its commander. Holofernes. She was brave as a lion. When her tongue was surrounded and threatened, Judith hatched a plan to save her people and herself. She coldly seduced and then murdered the enemy general, Holofernes, and hung his head on the city walls. Seeing it, the enemy soldiers were thrown into the panic and fled. But Tulia was saved. Judith was a heroine. So let's take a look at the backstory of Judith. So there was a Persian, a Persian invasion of Israel led by Holofernes. The Persians surrounded the hilltop of Betulia, where Judith lives. The tongues people begged their leader to surrender, playing for time. The leader citizen Uzziah asked God for a further five days. If God doesn't save them, they will surrender. So Judith confronts the tongue leader. Their plan, she said, is not the right course of action. So she has her own secret plan when she begins to put into action. So she grooms herself, put on her fine linen, and she met Holofernes, who is speechless by her beauty. He plans to seduce her, but she turned the table on him because she had her own secret plan. Then she kills him by hacking off his head. Judith and her faithful maid wrapped up the head of Holofernes and took it back to Betulia. Her husband has died three years previously of sunstroke, but has, has left her financially independent. Despite her will, she lived a simple, almost luxurious life in a shelter, top, shelter rooftop of her house, fasting and praying most of the time. Judith is, of course, aware of what's going on around her in her tongue. Her maid has been skillful in gossip, and through her, Judith learned of Uzziah's promise to surrender the tongue after five days if God has not saved it. So she sent the elders, including Uzziah, and when they came to her rooftop, they discussed the situation that's been going on. That's when she entered the scene to go after Holofernes. So Judith, Judith prayed to God. When the men are gone, she lays herself on the ground and make a prayer to Judith. She described the terrible things that has happened to the woman during war and says she does not pretend to understand but accept that they are somehow part of God's ultimate design and plan. She urges God to break their power by putting strength instead, of, instead into the hands of a widow herself and also asking God to give her strength for what she must do. She took his own sword and beheaded Holofernes. Now, it is very important here to keep in mind that deceit is, was a recognized and admired strategy in ancient warfare. So you, did, so, you had, so you did what you need to do to save your people. In the final story of, of Judith, Judith leads a dancing procession of women. She celebrated with a huge festival and led her people in an orderly fashion, singing hymns of praise to God towards Jerusalem. The lavish bed curtains from Helophinus' tent are given as an offering in the temple. So when they all when they are, all have worshipped there for three months, they return. And Judith return, retires to her estate in Bethulia. She lives there, still much loved. She is until she is very old, 105. The faithful maid is set free, and Judith is eventually buried in the tomb of her husband, and she never remarries. So what can we learn about Judith's lesson? It's simply waiting on the Lord. It teaches us about leadership, 
turn to the powers that be and implore them to make positive changes. Continue to pray and fast. Judah shows us what true faith looks like, holding fast to God on his schedule. It's easy to fall into to the trap of forcing God into our timetable. So, he, so there's some sub sub subletal going on with the timing. So throughout scripture, 40 days is a period used for preparation. No on the ark. Moses on the move on the mountain. Jesus is, is in the desert at the start of his ministry. When Goliath and the Philistines torn the Israels, God waits for 40 days before sending David. When the people in Bethlehem wanted to surrender, the meeting took place on day 34 of siege. And Uzziah buys God five more days. In other words, the Israelite awaits, agreed to wait until 39 days to give up. But God, that was not God's timetable. They often try to force God to act before his time. So often we do this. We pray like, God, if you don't want me to do this, give me some kind of sign. Even when we know the course of action is wrong. But that's threatening God. Give me a sign or I'll embrace the sin. Judah shows what true faith looks like. Holding fast to God on his schedule. Even if it entails suffering or death. And if we want him to move faster than he seems to be, our recourse is to call upon him to help us. These are the ends of my few, few words. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, what a privilege and a blessing for this morning, Lord Jesus, to give you all the praise and glory, Lord Jesus, at this time. Thanking you for your strength and your mercy, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray that we continue to pray and fast like Judith and to continue to wait on your time, Lord Jesus. Good thing happen to those who wait and waiting is the preparation for us all for your glory, Lord Jesus. May you continue to lead us and direct us, Lord Jesus. May this devotion touch those who is waiting on you, Lord. Give them the strength and the perseverance to endure. Heaven bless you. Heaven thank you, Lord Jesus. And I ask all these things in no other name but in Jesus' almighty name. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for being with me at this time. Do like, describe, and remember we have more devotions coming up. Have a blessed day. Stay safe.